Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube series on how to create a PC gaming console for the living room. In the last episode, we installed and configured LaunchBox, and we installed our premium license so that we can use BigBox. BigBox is LaunchBox's version of Big Picture Mode. Since that time, I have went ahead and added a few more systems into LaunchBox. I added Sony PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and PSP. I did run into some trouble configuring PSP since LaunchBox didn't have a recommended default emulator. So I created some DLC, if you will, for the series. Uh, so check the series playlist for a video on how to add PSP games or any console system into LaunchBox where there's no default recommended emulator. So if you go to the page here, uh, there's a video called Add PSP Games to LaunchBox. Uh, it's not narrated. I've got some uh, music playing in the background. Uh, and it'll walk you through, basically, if you are adding a system into LaunchBox, like PSP, and LaunchBox doesn't recognize that system, or it recognizes the system, but it doesn't have a default recommended emulator, so you've got to configure an emulator for it. This will walk you through how to do that. Okay, so let's jump right in here. What we're going to do is we're going to open up that LaunchBox that I downloaded in the last video. Okay, and we see we've got a couple of additional systems. Last time where we ended, we had added just a couple of Windows games, uh, one Steam game and one Uplay game uh, into the system, and we added Nintendo GameCube. So now we should be able to open LaunchBox here, or we should be able to open Big Box, that is. Okay, so we're in the default view. Uh, where we left off. So first thing we're going to do real quick is set up the controller because by default the uh, the con It doesn't recognize the controller. So we're going to hit the escape key and then we're going to go to options and From options, we're going to go down to controller and Enter we're going to click enter to enable game controller and then we're going to go down to the device and click enter Which should cycle through all your controllers until you find the controller that you want I'm using an Xbox 360 uh, controller for this. Okay, so once we've done that, we can go to the controller and hit B to go back and B to go back. Um, next thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to uh, enable some automation. So we actually want to go back to options and then go to controller buttons, click enter on this, and then I go down here to switch view and click the A button, it'll ask you to press a button. I'm gonna press down on the left analog stick. Okay, and what that's gonna let us do is once we uh, get back into the main big box menu, we can just press the analog stick down and cycle through all the different views. Uh, it's very, a lot easier than going here to settings every time we wanna take a look at one of the views look like. So we'll go back into the default uh, 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 big box interface here. Okay, uh, first thing we going to do is those sounds. So listen to these sounds. I don't know how well this is coming through. But, uh, you know, I, I personally find those sounds to be incredibly obnoxious. So I'm going to go ahead and back out here and exit the big box. And then what we're going to do is go get some sounds. So if you go into launch box... Then what we can go ahead and do here is we can go to help and then go to forums. Okay, once you're in the LaunchBox forums, you're going to go ahead and go down to uh, Big Box Sound Packs. Click that link. And what we're going to want to get here is the Sci-Fi Sounds by Clavius. So you can click this thread, and in the thread there'll be a download link where you can download Clavius's custom big box sounds set. So there's the link there. Uh, go ahead and fetch that. So once you've done that, then we're going to go ahead and exit out of LaunchBox. And remember uh, from the previous videos, the pane in the bottom is the final configured system for LaunchBox, and the pane in the top is the one that we are currently configured from, we're configuring now from scratch. So we've downloaded those Clavius sounds, uh, which I've already staged in my uh, main system. Uh, so we want to get those new sounds in here. Now there are a lot of sounds to pick from. I think Clavius has provided something like six sets of sounds. I've picked the one that I like the most. Basically all you have to do is extract that download. It's going to be some WAV files. I then go into the launch box, 
sounds folder and put the new sounds in there. Now you can make a backup of the original sounds if you don't like the new Clavia sounds uh, to restore it to the way it was when you started. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Copy these sounds. Okay. And now we should be able to open Big Box again and it should use the new sounds that we brought in. Initializing Big Box. Okay, that sounds much nicer. We can go uh, go up and down here to hear this hear some of the sounds. All right. Okay. All right, so next we want to take a look at all these images. So, uh, you know, the, the platform images. So you see here the Nintendo GameCube image, PlayStation image, PlayStation 2. Uh, some of these are not necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing to look at either. So we're going to exit out of here. And then we're going to go back to those forums. And... We are going to take a look at a uh, some custom images that we can download and put into Big Box. There is a Kickstarter going on right now to fund the creation of these transparent PNG images for each platform. Um, but luckily, we you know they, they are being posted on this thread and we can download them. So we're going to go to images and video. And we're going to take a look here at fundraising for beautiful new console system artwork. Okay, and in this thread, this is kind of a sample of uh, the stuff that, you know, they're working on. Um, and you can download any of these right now. So bad news is there aren't any Sony platforms in here, at least not on the main page. Though I think the page does have something like eight pages uh, going on in this thread and I think each page is people contributing uh, but for now just to show you you'll know, keep an eye on this thread but what we're going to do here is just right click on the GameCube one save picture as and then here we're going to want to go ahead and put this in the uh, launch box images platforms now you may not have this platforms folder if you don't create it in the images directory but we're going to go platforms Nintendo GameCube, Banner, and then in Banner, we're going to save this file, but we want to rename the file to the platform name. So in this case, that's Nintendo GameCube, and it's a PNG, so we're going to save it. Okay, so it's saved. So we've actually got two images in there at this time. Um, we're going to launch this big box again. Initializing big box. Okay. Now we notice here that our new transparent image is there and it looks very nice uh, because we have two images. It's going to go back and forth. So we see we've got the original image. If we don't want the original image, we can go back to that directory and find this image and delete it. Uh, and like I said, at present, there isn't a uh, transparent images available for PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PSP, Windows, or that. But there are a lot of systems in there. Uh, but they're not all covered yet. So do keep an eye on that uh, thread in the forums uh, for when the new images come out or even potentially support them on Kickstarter if that's something you want to do. Okay, you'll notice that here we've got images in the background. Uh, you know, we'll go to GameCube here and cycle through some games and we see that the fan art's in the background. Now, uh, this fan art got scraped when you did an import process in LaunchBox. You may not like these images, um, so you can customize these if you want to. So I'll show you how you go ahead and do that. So all these resources are sitting on the disk. They're not embedded in binary files. They're not wrapped up in, in DATs or something like that or serialized, uh, which is really nice because it gives you the ability as the user to really take ownership of how your system looks and feels. So if you go in the launch box here and go into the images directory, we'll notice that each platform is represented by a folder and we can go into the folder. And then under a particular platform, here's the different categories. So the fan art background is the backgrounds that you see when you're cycling through a game. So we see Animal Crossing. We've got Animal Crossing 1 through 9, Fire Emblem uh, 1 through 15, so forth. You can just get rid of the ones you don't want, or you can just get the ones you do want and put them in here and follow this numbering convention. 
one gotcha on this that I learned the hard way is if you're going to put images in here uh, for a game that has an illegal character, like in Windows, the uh, colon is not a valid character for a file name. So you can just replace all the illegal file names with an underbar and that will uh, act as an apostrophe or colon or other illegal characters in Windows. So that's how you customize the images uh, for each of these different platforms. Okay, so let's talk about video snaps. I mean, that's really kind of the big feature that I really like. Um, so, you know, if you went into LaunchBox and you like brought in all your Super Nintendo games and all your Genesis games, and I, yeah, I think there's something like two or 3,000 Genesis games or something like that. Uh, and you're really, I don't know why you'd want to do that, first of all, because in Big Box, you're really going one game at a time. And do you really want to cycle through a list of 3,000 games for, for a platform? I don't know. Some people like, you know, think that's impressive. For me personally, I want my. A gaming console in the living room to be functional, right? I, I don't I don't want somebody to spend half the night trying to figure out what game they want to play, right? I want a nice clean list of games that are installed and ready to play. Uh, but that's my own personal preference. Everybody else uh, may have a different opinion on that matter. So long story short, if you did that, if you had LaunchBox scrape your 2000 games or whatever, uh, and you want videos for those things, uh, you, you, you don't have a lot of options there. I mean, you, you could, you could buy a premium membership to emumovies.com and then enter that information into LaunchBox. And when you add the platform, it will then give you options to download video snaps. Uh, so that's an option. Um, the, I'm sure there's groups out there. You can join forums and, and, and private trackers and things like that, that where people are sharing their video snaps as well. Uh, and all that good stuff. But for the purpose of our series, I'm going to assume that you've used your own capture software or Steam or NVIDIA or Windows 10 or um, some other means to take snapshots or game captures of the games that you've played or you found somewhere online that you have been able to go to to get videos of your particular games. So what we're going to do is in my final configuration for LaunchBox, we're going to go to videos. And if we open videos, we see same thing. Uh, we've got all the folders uh, denoting the platform that we're working with. We've also got a platforms folder, which is a recently newer, kind of a newer feature where you could actually have a video snap as the background for the platform itself, uh, which is kind of neat. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go and copy the videos folder from the final configuration of LaunchBox into the new one that we're configuring. So we're going to copy here. And the naming structure is the same as it was for the images directory. You just go into the videos folder, go into the platform that you're working with, and then rename the video to the name of the, uh, of the game. And then it will then start to appear in the system. I don't know yet if you could have more than one video per game. I did add the numbering sequence at the end of the videos and that didn't seem to work all that great uh, or didn't seem to work at all. Uh, so I don't know, maybe that's a feature they're working on or maybe I just don't know enough about that particular feature to do it properly. So we've added our videos in here. So let's go back in the big box. Initializing big box. And we should now start to uh, to get some video stuff. So for GameCube, what we're going to do is we're going to press in that left analog stick to cycle through the different views till we find. So there's one that's got a video on the platform. Here are the videos on the right hand side. Here are the videos on the left hand side. And so there's some views. Not sure which view we really kind of prefer for this. Guess that view is really fine. Uh, I think that view is probably better. Okay, so that's the view that we'll use. Okay, so if we go into GameCube here, uh, here we just got a top-down list. Uh, not really that pleasing. So let's. This has got to, you know, you you can cycle the views here as well. So here, that one's that was pretty impressive looking. I mean, assuming that you've got the uh, 
the clear logo images for every game. That looks really nice. So again, you can just hit that left analog stick and uh, mess around with the views until you find a view that you like. That's, I think that's the view that we're using downstairs. Yeah, this is the view that we're using. Okay, so now we should be able to go in here. Cycle through the views. Okay. Okay, we'll cycle through these views a little bit. All right. Okay, so again, you can, uh, you know, you can play with this as much as you want to. I don't want to get too wrapped up in, you know, how I'm going to do my view and everything. But long story short, just know that, uh, you know, everything is customizable in this particular platform. Uh, you can change all the images, the backgrounds, the logos. Uh, there's also support for themes as well, where you can make all your own custom themes. You can write your own XAML definitions and bring those in, and you've got your own custom themes. Uh, if you have any questions about any of this kind of stuff, the LaunchBox application is extremely active. This development is active. The guys who are developing the product, they are doing live streams on YouTube where you can watch them develop and you can participate. You can submit bugs. You can ask for new features. To access all of that content, you know, I would just go to help and then you've got in the help section, you've got tutorials, forums, feedback, report a bug, um, all this kind of stuff. So feel free to use that. Um, that's about all I have to show for setting up Big Box. Um, I've got my configuration finalized. We're, we love it. We've been using it now for, for quite a while downstairs in the living room, so it's great for us. Um, so th that's pretty much it for, for this particular video. Uh, next time, I think what we're going to try to do is tie up some loose ends, and we'll talk about some gotchas and some finishing touches that we're going to implement in the, in the PC downstairs so it acts more like an off-the-shelf device you know, as much as possible, you know, instead of acting like, you know, a computer that we just happen to plug into a TV. So take a look at some of that stuff and add some nice finishing touches at the end to kind of tie this thing off. Again, uh, you know, thanks for watching.